All right, so here we have our simulated Dark Souls experience. We have zero souls right now. And if you jump off the cliff, a blood pool appears on the last safe position. And here we have some black ground, which has a big slope. So we don't consider that as a good terrain. And as a matter of fact, if we die here, our blood pool spawns at the top of it. Now, if we have some souls, we lose our souls and the blood pool appears. And if you collect it, we get our souls back. Hi, I'm Ricky. Today we're making a blood pool system inspired by the Dark Souls series. It's a very cool mechanic, but it's also fairly easy to implement. You can download the entire project with GitHub, and if you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comments, or you can join my Discord channel and ask me directly. All right, so let's start. Here we are in a new scene in Unity, and to showcase the blood pool system, I'm also gonna make the player and the ground so we can walk somewhere. All right, so I've made the ground, which is just a, a cube. I also made it green, and the player is just a cylinder. Now let's select our player, and we need some way to actually move. In my case, I'm gonna make a very quick movement script, but of course, you can move however you want in your game. And in here, I'm just gonna pass some code real quick, and I'll walk you through it. So we have an update function in which we move, and the movement is extremely basic. We just stick an input, and then we move the transforms position in that direction for each direction. And then we also check for the player's position. We check whether the y is minus than minus three. And if so, then we consider it a death. So it's basically if we fall off a cliff. And the death function, we just reset the position. Two important things, you can move however you want. You don't need to use this bit of code. If you wanna move with a rigid body or with clicking your mouse, it doesn't change anything. Second thing, the death function, for now it just resets the position. We are not resetting the scene. This is important because in this video, I'm just gonna show you how to use the system without using static or player breath values. In another video, I'm gonna show you how to do this system with resetting a scene. All right, but for now it doesn't matter. So let's just go to Unity and let's showcase it real quick. You can see that it's just moving around and that's all. Let's also add a rigid body component to the player. And let's set the constraints on the rotation because we don't really care about that. So now if we hit play, we should also be able to fall off the ground. Yep. And if you go too further down, we die. Perfect. All right. So now for actual soul system, we're going to do this all in one script. So in our player, let me close this real quick. Let's make another new component and I'm going to call it player souls system. In here, we want to check every so often if a player's current position is a safe spot. And if it is, we save that position and spawn the blood pool once we die. So to check something every so often, we could use an update method and use a very common timer. But because we don't really care about interacting with the timer and we don't have to do anything every frame, we can just use a curtain. And make sure to import system collections. Now in here, let's do a while loop and add a delay inside. This way, once we call the coroutine, we're gonna execute this bit of code in here every second until we break manually. Before we go any further, let's actually call this coroutine in the awake. We may also want to change how often we check for the position, so let's also make a new float variable. Now to actually know whether we are on a safe position, we are gonna use raycasts. So we're gonna shoot a raycast from the player down and see if we hit something that is workable. So we take the player's central position, we shoot it right down, and we also want to know where the raycast has hit, so the actual point in the ground. So we want to take the raycast hit info, we also want to set the raycast distance, so let's make a new variable. And also a layer mask, so we only check for the ground and not for other stuff. Let's hover to raycast and let's check that the parameters are correct. Looks like they are. And now if our code goes here, it means that we have found a safe spot. And now we just need to save that spot in a new vector3 variable. And to get the raycast hit of a collision, we use hitinfo.point. 
Right, so now we have our last save position. Now we just need to spawn our blood pool when we die at that position. So let's make a game object reference to the blood pool. And when we die, let's turn it on and change its position. We already have a way to detect when the player dies, that is in our player movement. So let's make a public function in player solo system. And let's call it in player movement. Two things, we're using getable component here instead of singletons. It really doesn't matter at this point. And second, I am calling this on player depth function here, but you can call it from wherever you want. What's important is that you call this function on player death when the player dies. It doesn't matter how you do it. All right, so now in here, All right, let's go to Unity. Let's make a blood pool. All right, so we made the blood pool. It's just a flattened out sphere, also made it red. And by default, we set it to false. Then select the ground. Let's also make a new layer. And this is gonna be the layer that we apply to each workable ground. So now we select the ground again, and we set it to the ground layer. And finally, in the player, we bring in the blood pool reference and we set the ground layer to ground. And that's it, let's hit play. Now, every so often, we are changing the last safe spot position. And if we die, you see that our blood pool spawns right there. And now right there. All right, so ne the next step is to actually collect the blood pool and to do something with it. To collect the blood pool, for now, we're just gonna collide with it. So let's go to the blood pool and let's set it to its trigger too. Then in our code, let's add a on trigger enter. And to detect the blood pool, we already have a reference to it. Now we just need to turn it off. And that's all we need to activate and deactivate the blood pool. If you go to Unity, now let's make some bad terrain. And this can be anything, like a moving platform or a slope, anything that you want. All right, so I've made the matte terrain. In my case, I just duplicated the ground and changed the color. And because we have a rigid body in our player, when we go onto this matte terrain, we're just gonna fall down and eventually we're gonna die. So basically, it's a type of ground where we don't want the player to go. If he goes there, he's done for. And to make it so that this doesn't count as a safe spot, we just change the layer from ground to anything else. In this case, I'm gonna set it to default. So now if we hit play, we have our normal blood pool that spawns there. If we die again, it goes there. And we can collect it now thanks to the trigger event. But now if you go down this slope, you can see that the blood pool spawns at the top and not in the middle of the slope. All right, so now let's add in the source system. So let's go back to player source system. And here let's make two int values, one for the current source and one for the source that are in the blood pool. And just for the sake of debugging and clarity, I'm also going to set them to serialized. Now when we die, we set the source in the blood pool to be equal to the current ones, and then we set the current ones to zero. And when we collect the source, so in here, we add to the current source the one that we've lost, and we set the source in blood pool to zero. Now we just need a type of feedback to actually see what's going on. I know we have the serialized stuff, but let's make it a bit more interesting. So I'm also going to make a text that displays our current source. I'm using TM Pro, but of course you can use the basic text system if you want. Now let's make a function to update this text. It's very simple, we take the text and change the actual text to souls plus the current amount of souls. And to add some souls to the player, you probably have your own fighting system, your shop system, whatever it is. In my case, I'm gonna make a debug function and a button to increase the amount of souls artificially. And finally, we want to call the update current souls text. Here where we add some souls, but also whenever we change its amount. So here too, in on player death, and also when we collect the blood pool. 
All right, let's go back to Unity. I'm gonna add the text. All right, so I made the text and let's also make a button. And now let's select our player and link in the current source text. And in the button, I'm gonna link that debug function that we just made. So player, player source system, add the source. I'm just gonna add 10 souls. Now let's select our player and hit play. All right, so here we have our simulated Dark Souls experience. We have zero souls right now. And if we jump off the cliff, a blood pool appears on the last safe position. You can see here, this one's here. And here we have some black ground, which has a big slope. So we don't consider that as a good terrain. And as a matter of fact, if we die here, our blood pool spawns at the top of it. Let me collect it. Now, if we have some souls, so I'm going to add 20 souls to myself. And if we die, we lose our souls and the blood pool appears. And if we collect it, we get our souls back. Now, if we die again, let me add some souls before I get it. They're going to add up. But if I die twice in a row, we've lost all our souls. And if I get the blood pool, that blood pool is empty, so we don't get anything. Much like in Dark Souls fashion. Alright, so that's it for this video. Hope you learned something new. If you have any doubts about the video, remember you can download the project from GitHub or you can ask me in the comments. You can also join my Discord channel just for fun or for programming doubts. I'm also working on a new game right now, it's called AA and there's a teaser trailer, link in the description. And if you want updates on it, make sure to subscribe and to follow me on Twitter. And if you have any suggestion about the next topic that you'd like to see, do tell me in the comments. This video was actually suggested by a user. Alright, so stay safe and see you next time.